Today we're taking a closer look at ABI and I'll show you how to configure Equalizer APO for the EQ and the compression settings that I use. And I'll show you how to configure these settings in a step-by-step -step guide. So this should make for a handy resource for anyone tweaking ABI audio. But first, we're going to take a look at where the footsteps are in ABI. This is a plot spectrum of a clip that we'll see later on, and I've highlighted 315Hz and 6.3kHz, and this is where the footsteps live. At 100Hz, we'll be placing the low shell filter, and this will help to roll off excess bass and to add a bit of headroom to the mix. And by adding additional headroom, it helps us out later when we add compression to the mix. And this is a waterfall graph of the same clip. And you can see the difference in volume between the bass and the treble here. And I'll overlay what the ranges are that we'll be targeting with the EQ. Uh, because after we apply the EQ, we'll be applying compression. And this will give a boost to the quieter sounds, especially those that exist in the treble range. Let's go ahead and listen to this clip in action. We'll do it in a before and after fashion, where the before is the EQ off, and the after will have the EQ and the compression applied. Alright, so let me explain what's going on here. In showing the plot spectrum, the loudest sound in this clip is roughly occurring at 60 Hz, while 315 and 6.3K are much lower in volume, and the difference is roughly 11 dB of volume. This is what I mean when I say that excess bass runs the risk of masking over footsteps at 315 Hz. Because when we look at the plot spectrum with EQ and compression enabled, we see a big change, and the loudest sound is roughly now 300 to 315 hertz, while the bass is still present, but now it's taking a back seat in the audio mix. I'll overlay the difference in volume, and we see the previous bass peak has reduced quite a bit, while 315 and 6.3K now have an opportunity to stand out in the mix. Let's hop over into our equalizer and see how to configure this for ABI. Alright, here we are in equalizer APO. I've already zeroed out all of the frequencies to make this easier to focus on the, uh, the frequencies that we, that we want to tweak and adjust. We'll start with 100Hz and we'll adjust it by minus 12dB. Then we'll select the low shell filter option from the drop down menu. Next, we'll add 315Hz and boost it by 6dB with a Q of 3 and we'll keep it on the default peaking filter. Then we'll add 6300Hz, we'll boost it by 6dB with a Q of 3 and this will also be set to the default peaking filter. And we can take a look at the curve that we're applying here. Around 100Hz you'll see that it's gently rolling off the bass while we're applying two bell-shaped peaks right around 315 and 6.3k and that's where the footsteps live. I also experimented with a high shell filter around 10k uh, just to see if it made any improvements to you know directional audio cues but unfortunately I, I didn't notice any benefits. So that was basically it and then we later see additional benefits when applying the compression. And speaking of compression, let's jump into the Equalizer APO editor and we'll check out the Loudmax VST plugin. Here we'll make sure to link both the threshold and the output. And what this does is it caps how loud gunfire and explosions can get while boosting the quieter sounds in the mix. For ABI, we'll need to pull down the ceiling by 6 dB and since they're linked, we'll also be boosting the floor by 6 dB. 
All right, that's how to configure Equalizer APO and LoudMax for ABI. If you want to learn how to install Equalizer APO and the LoudMax VST plugin, I made a video about that and I'll put a link to it in the description. Okay, let's talk calibration and adjustments. For all the testing done in ABI, I use the Bear Dynamic DT900 Pro X's, and I will uh, throw up the frequency response graph that I took of my model. As you can see, they're relatively neutral in the base and the mids, and they also showcase the typical Bear Dynamic treble. But if you're using, let's say, a headphone that isn't base neutral, let's say something like a Sennheiser or, you know, most open backs these days, um, we can make some tweaks to the EQ and we can account for the bass roll off. If this is the case for you, I would start by adjusting the low shelf filter. You could try reducing the strength of it from 12 dB to 6 dB and see if that sounds right for you. I don't think we need to make any adjustments to 315 Hz or 6.3 kHz. These are the core frequencies where the footsteps exist in ABI. And both with the 6 dB boost, and after adding compression, I think it does a good job of making them stand out in the mix. And like I said before, I didn't notice any benefit to boosting 10k+. plus, But this could be because of the headphone that I'm using. Um, if you wanted to add a filter in this range, I would start with a high shell filter. And probably start or replace it around 9 or 10k. But as we saw earlier... At times, there just isn't much going on in this region. One thing that I wanted to mention before we wrap this up is that EQ and compression are two sides of the same coin. Just applying one or the other doesn't provide the full benefit. When we apply the EQ, we are shaping the sound. And this provides necessary headroom, which uh, allows the compression to step in and to give a boost to the quietest details without messing with the rest of the mix. Alright, I think I've covered everything that I've wanted to. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.